round five. He's now going to adjust his aim slightly, raise his aim, and he's going to walk the barrage forward. And by this, he aims to do two things. Smash the barbed wire, cut the barbed wire, and kill the enemy. Another round in. Now, the scale of cut. Uh, we can't drive the originals, they are too fragile. She's quite slow. On the road, she'll be four miles an hour. Off road, probably two. But that doesn't matter, because she's coming forward, the infantry are following behind. This is a male tank, so she has a pair of six pounder gun for a shot at machine gun post. And the rest of the kids are moving forward. By this time of the war, the infantry have learned about a lot, and they're practicing fire and movement. The Mark IV has scored a hit on the machine gun post. It's knocked out the machine gun. It's mechanized the lot during the First World War. Mark V attack. The A7V is really not an outstanding design. Not even the Germans thought much of it. Von Lindorf said, well, it's it, which is why we've got our replica here. But the funny thing is, the Germans had far more tanks than that because they reused British tanks. After the Battle of Wood to make a dummy tank, and this is being used by the German forces in that interwar period to work out how we're going to use tanks ourselves and how might you attack a tank. Now Germany, it ties up with the other side, but this vehicle, the Germans with their cooperation with the Russians, Russians in 1930, they put, they start doing experiments for a light tractor and heavy tractor as they're calling it, code words. Hitler rips up the Versailles peace treaty in 1933 and he starts proper tank production. Panzer one. Panzer II, the early tanks, really for training, but they are given armour plate in case they're going to be needed in combat. Panzer III, Panzer IV are going to be the ones. Armour plate that will stop a bullet. It has two machine guns with a view of suppressing the enemy positions, and it works quite well for an early experimental vehicle. The second vehicle there is a light Mark IV, it's a British. <laughs> North Africa, it proved to be the match for anything the British had. We had a lot of light cruiser tanks. David was explaining the difference between cruisers and infantry tanks. Basically, the British decided to split their tank philosophy in three. The light tank, like the one you saw, like the you just see. That was almost a metal horse. That was a cavalry man in a... The goal of the Tilda 
isn't really equal to taking on that 88 because the Matilda fires solid shot. But you're in a tank which only fires solid shot and you're facing an anti-tank gun, you've really got to hit it slap bang in the middle of it without themselves being destroyed. Now, the tractor that's pulling it is the SDKFZ-7, designed as an artillery tractor, but also as a troop carrier. You carry a rifle section there, and in this particular computer, Kesserine off Rommel. But perhaps the most important thing about those Americans coming into the war was the fact that it mobilised the enormous industrial power of America. And three tanks were fed into this armored air division tank. So it was very popular with the British crews. It's under armoured, so we used it as a cruiser tank, quite quaintly. The real right in it was the gun. The gun there is a 37mm. That is the American version of the 37mm that they bought off the Germans. They couldn't beat the demand, so Ford of America was brought in to produce them. This is what they produced. It's a copy of the University of Germany. Now, Matilda's getting an elderly blesser. Those are Mark III. And again, my second, my second Churchill reference today so far. Uh, initially, it wasn't mechanically terribly reliable. And allegedly, Churchill was, was heard to say, it's big, it's ugly, it's not very reliable, so they obviously named it after me. In fact, it became a very, very effective pattern. Now, if you look at it, you can see that sort of First World War heritage. Look at the track layout. It's kind of reminiscent of First World War Tank Buster. Do you want to hear the 17 pounder? Yeah. Put your fingers in your ears. That's act I'm literally going to do that. It's, 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 a, it's a big old beast. Uh, first used in 1943, when the Allied of the Eighth Army in particular assaulted a German defensive position called Marath Line. It had been a French defensive position which had been taken over and uh, re-fortified by Rommel in his last desperate attempt to hold Tunisia. <laughs> and that's the first round away. They blew up the, the microphone. What is interesting, you might not notice with the laying, but there's no wheels to lay this gun. They fire it like a rifle. It goes into the shoulder and you move it left and right just by leaning on it. So, it's the only time a gun number one is allowed to fire, uh, the number three, who's the layer, can fire under his own orders, doesn't need to be told to fire, so as soon as he's got it on his sights, he can fire. Same kind of chassis, it's even more, more 
still walk tank behind it. We've got M8 Greyhound here. The 222 is firing on it. But we've got M8 Greyhound. This kind of engagement, but it was prone to uh, blind. We've got some lucky about blind today, but we're very much prone to damage from blind. So much so that the crew have often packed the fence of the thing with sandbags to try and keep it on the tension. Now the Hexer is coming forward, the Pack 38 has redeployed, Hexer's coming forward, backed up by the Hanaman, in there we've got our Panzer Grenadiers. Now it's essential that we get in. But at the moment they're jockeying for position. The Greyhound is manoeuvring to make sure he's got his gun pointed towards the threat. So far, and it looks as if the Panzer Grenadiers have decided, in the face of that threat, to move out. They're going to move on. That Sherman is closing. Now, there's nothing on this battlefield that the Sherman can't cope with. The Hetzer can damage the Sherman if it gets a decent shot in. If any of those Panzer Grenadiers have got Panzer Faust or Panzer Street, GI's are left out of covering for that. It's all the Panzer Grenadiers are firing. Right, you'll notice the GI's on the hold right now trying to dominate the battlefield. Keep those Panzer Grenadier heads down. There goes the bazooka. As he hits. Yes, he's hit, he's got it. Remember this, gentlemen, we've somewhat shrunk the size of the battlefield, so it would have taken quite that time for the bazooka shell to get there. The water shrapnel will pose a threat to everybody left alive in there. Smoke obscuring the battlefield. This is far from a pushover. This isn't, this isn't a gentle walk into Germany. The GIs are having to fight his own way to World War One. Thank <laughs> you. 